You're listening to the Access Success Podcast, produced by Access U, a division of Access Advertising and Public Relations. Hey, let's do something big. I'm your host, Rachel Schneider. Welcome to the Access Success Podcast, where we highlight important topics focused on education in every form it takes. Our guest today is a Roanoker who, like many, moved to the Star City and realized there was so much to explore, but something was missing. An Instagram account to show her and others the fun things to do and the best spots for a bite to eat. So she decided to start one herself and has since amassed over 16,000 followers who look to her to to plan their weekends, their lunch breaks, their vacations, and more. Please welcome to the studio the content creator behind the Best of Roanoke Instagram page, Jenya Kalanina. Hi, Jenya. Hi. Thank you for having me. It's great to have you here. So, Jenya, before starting the page, I, I have to ask, did you see yourself becoming an Instagram influencer? Um, honestly, no. I, I, I don't think I even was following that many influencers at the time. Um, I wasn't like honestly even that big on social media myself when I started it. And it's just a whole new world, honestly, out there online um, that I came to discover. So, um, but no, I did not think that the page would get so big and that people would really be looking at me um, to influence what they're doing. And before starting the page, did you have any formal social media or marketing experience? I kind of want to start from the beginning of like what year did you decide you wanted to do this? Yeah. Um, so I, I had moved to Roanoke in um, fall of 2019. And I started it very shortly afterward in um, February of 2020. Um, I actually don't have any formal marketing experience. I did study um, business administration with a marketing concentration in college. Um But that was back in 2014. And at the time, I always wanted to work in marketing, but um, without having like a good, I guess, marketing experience, I actually uh, went into um, staffing and recruiting after college and never really got to work in marketing. So um, that's kind of, I guess, my creative outlet and starting the page. And I finally got to like work in marketing, which is what I'd wanted to do for a long time. And when you moved to Roanoke in 2019, um, you know, a year before the pandemic took hold of the country, what led to you creating the Best of Roanoke Instagram? And how did you keep up with it, too, during the pandemic? Yeah. um, So when I moved here, I was really looking um, online, of course, as most people for what to do in the area, start exploring my new home. And I had moved from Greenville, South Carolina, where I was there actually not that long um, in Greenville. And when I had moved to Greenville, um, I was looking on their Instagram to see what was going on in Greenville. And they had a lot of different accounts actually to show you what was going on. And I'd lived in Charlotte and in Raleigh and all of those cities had accounts. So of course I was looking for a similar one when I moved to Roanoke. Yeah. And um, I couldn't really find a whole lot. So I just thought like I would start my own. one thing I did find, actually, when I was looking on YouTube, because um, I couldn't find much on Instagram, so I went to YouTube to see if there was anything on YouTube. And uh, for some reason, um, actually, elevators kept coming up. And I was a little bit confused because, you know, I heard that Roanoke was in the mountains. So I was like, why Why all these elevators? And um, it turns out we actually did have, like, a big YouTuber that lives in Roanoke that um, his passion is, like, elevators and railroads. So Interesting. Yeah, so he was posting a lot of that. So that was, that was actually kind kind of kind of cool but not exactly what I was looking for you know I was looking for more like outdoors and and restaurants um but I thought I was like I was like okay that's kind of a cool hidden gem because it turns out he actually has um like a little elevator museum um near downtown so that was actually one of my first posts um about his elevator museum but just random story (laughs) no I mean that's so that it's funny how it start it sparked that creativity for yourself to be able to get involved and start creating content um and you got to have it come full circle when you created a post about his work so yeah yeah, I mean over the past few years the account has gained a substantial following clearly how quickly did you start to notice that people were paying attention to your posts and you started getting more and more followers uh, liking your content. Yeah, it um, honestly got big um, pretty pretty quickly, which I'm, I'm very thankful for. Um, 
I think people really appreciate like the firsthand perspective. Um, I try to make my posts uh, very relatable. Um, I try to do things that um, anybody can picture themselves doing. Um, try to keep it like just very genuine and, and authentic. And um, I'll always show like what I'm doing um, and just keep it very like firsthand. So. I think people like really appreciate that sort of like um, content and that sort of perspective. And I want people to like imagine themselves like also going to this restaurant or also going on this hike. And um, so it, it picked up, I think, pretty quick just because of that like um, authentic, like relatable type content. Yeah, I mean, I moved to Roanoke in 2021, in the spring of 21. And the first thing I did was I looked for social media accounts to follow and yours was one of the first that I did because it showed all the hikes I could go on or different restaurants and things to do. And it got me really excited even before I moved here because I started seeing Roanoke as a touristy spot or a vacation spot or you know a place for camping and family trips. And there is so much to offer in the area. What do you think has been your favorite post so far, or your favorite adventure that you've gone on that you've shown on your page? Um, oh gosh, there's so many. <laughs> I'd say like um, actually around the fall is, is really beautiful here. Um, I mean, all four seasons, of course. But like fall with like all the foliage and everything. Yes. Um, yeah, I think people like really appreciate like even like uh, the forecast. Like I'll go out and do like a live look and people are like, oh, are the trees like um, is it like peak foliage yet? So I don't know. That's that's been really fun, like doing all the hiking, not even just in the fall, but anytime. And, um, you know, you can read online about about hiking and they'll tell you um, like how long it is or anything like that. But you don't get that like actual like video content, which is, you know, something I can offer on my page. Um, so I just think it's a lot more like interesting seeing it like in that type of format versus like the traditional like photo online blog post type format. Right, definitely. Because you get a little bit of an idea from professional photography or yeah. just one picture showing you a hike that you could do. But when you hear from someone who's been on the hike saying, hey, here's the level of difficulty, we mm -hmm. had a really fun time, but definitely wear your hiking boots or, you know, watch out for the forecast today, or this hike is the best to do in the fall, or this one's good to do in the wintertime. Those have been really helpful, too. Yeah, exactly. And it's also kind of um, like, I just did this, like, today or yesterday, you know, it's like, oh, this is something going on right now that I can do with my family this weekend. Yeah, it's so, timely. Yeah, exactly. And you also feature a lot of restaurants around town and, and local businesses. What has been their reaction when you're able to post this content versus from like when you first started, what was their reaction versus like now um, knowing more who you are in the community? <laughs> yeah, um, so I did do it um, basically out of pocket or like trades for um, almost, I think, like two years. So a long time before I actually started um, charging any kind of money for the kind of content that I create. Um, but I think businesses really appreciate a page like mine um, because it helps them like reach uh, audience of people that are literally looking for things to do in Roanoke. So um, it's been um, pretty well received um, by the businesses. Um, I will say there's still social media marketing is very new. Um, and in Roanoke, um, I think it's definitely very new. So, um, you know, I do like sometimes businesses actually still don't understand exactly what I'm trying to do. Uh, okay. um, so that can be like a little bit frustrating, um, but that's okay. You just have to kind of move on. <laughs> yeah. What do you think are the biggest misconceptions around social media marketing or kind of things that you've had to debunk when businesses ask or people around town? Um, I've gotten all sorts of comments, like some, a lot of, uh, I would say a lot of business owners, um, they just say, oh, I don't do social media. I don't get it. And yeah. And it, it's a little frustrating because it's like, they don't even want to learn. Like they yeah. don't even, I feel like they don't even know what they're missing out on, um, which is kind of frustrating. But uh, most of them, I think, are very receptive. Um, I will say like a misconception for sure is that I'm just trying to get free stuff, honestly. <laughs> so, which is completely not the case. Um, I know that the value that I provide to businesses is actually very immense. Um, 
because like you said, you moved here and that's one of the first things you did was, you know, check Instagram. And that is a lot, a lot, a lot of people moving here. That's the first thing they're doing. So it is actually bringing a lot of like attention and, and money to these businesses that they might not even realize. They might not even realize that these people are coming in because they sell you on social media. So, I mean, the fact that I'm just trying to get free, free food is completely a misconception um, when I'm offering so much value. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we tell our clients all the time here at Access U that you have to meet your audience where they are. And especially since we work with so many colleges, universities, and other institutions, I mean, that's where their audience is, right? Like the younger generation is on social media. And oftentimes your social media and online presence is the first impression people have of who you are. So if you're not on there or you're neglecting having a page, then it's it's kind of like um, the way that I relate it back to my parents when they ask a little bit about what I do in my career now is like, remember when we used to have the yellow pages mm-hmm. and you'd see every business there and that's where people would go to look? Well, that's kind of what like Instagram and Facebook is now when people are looking up things to do. um, It's not something that you just get in in the mail anymore. It's something that you can pull up on your phone. And when you have an account like yours that is showing relevant things to do during this time of year or who's offering special deals and and places to go um, that are fun during the fall or winter or summer, it makes planning your weekend so much easier. And what I love about it too is it gets people outside and it gets them experiencing their community. Mm -hmm. I think during the pandemic, we became such an independent society and and people, you know, were working from home, they were going out a lot less. But your account also, you know, encouraged me that I would, since I was moving to a new city to get out there and experience things again. So I, I think it's been such a great opportunity for businesses. And it's been cool for me to follow you just as as an audience member. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, I, I think if businesses are not on social media, I honestly think that they're missing out because um, it's actually Instagram and Facebook are completely free to set up. So, you know, um, of course, content creation does take a very long time. But I think it's worth it. Um, so, but I'm glad that, you know, you're able to get out and, and try new things. And that's kind of something I try to do with my page too. Um, like if there's like a restaurant on Williamson Road or something, which people might drive past every single day, but never, you know, stop in. Um, I love like showing that and being like, I went there and, you know, you can too. Um, I picked up some new hobbies like um I got like a stand up paddle board um, and I'll take it out on Carvin's Cove. And oh, nice. Yeah, I want like I want to inspire people to do that because uh, it mine's like an inflatable paddle board. So you don't even. Oh, cool. Yeah, you don't even need like an SUV or anything, really. So, yeah, I just like want to be able to show people that anybody can can do this, really. And when did you start to make the decision? When did you realize that you could start offering commissions and make this, you know, extra hobby that you were doing into a side hustle since that you were pumping out so much content all the time? Right. Yeah. So I was um, I took my time basically in, in monetizing the page. I never wanted to rush it. Um, so I actually really didn't start charging till about, um, two years in. And that's when I started doing like sponsored posts because, um, I kind of just had like a pretty good list of businesses that I worked with before, um, even just like for trades that, um, just did so well, like the post did so well. Um, and they would tell me like, oh, we got so many customers like after your your reel or um i featured like a new hotel in um, downtown roanoke and their follower count like doubled or like tripled so i'm like okay this business got so many followers just because of my post followers are so valuable you know to to pages because um it's a way for them to be able to reach back out to to this audience um and that's pretty much attributed to like my marketing, my, my page. Um, so I realized that this is actually worth um, quite a good bit. And, um, you know, a lot of businesses actually do agree. And um, so, yeah, now I do like take on some sponsored posts, but they have to match like my brand. Um, they have to be, like I mentioned, um, like something that, anybody can do like you know relatable type content I don't work with just like anyone um like I've had to say no to like some some brands or some companies because they wouldn't like they wouldn't fit my page so I do it like very intentionally 
Yeah, well, that's I'm I'm happy to hear that that you're able to curate that content, knowing what your audience wants and knowing the type of content that you want to be able to show them. So, in keeping your brand authentic, especially since you've been using it for so many years now, what are some of the biggest lessons that you've learned since starting the account? Yeah, um, definitely, like you just said, stay stay authentic um, for sure, and also stay consistent. Um, you know, I think a lot of like content creators, um, they do really well for like a few months and then they realize, oh, this is more work than I thought. <laughs> because I think everybody like will consume content and scroll on, you know, Instagram and TikTok for a long time. And that's easy. But when it comes to creating, I mean, so much goes into it. I mean, it's just like that one shot that I end up posting. There's like five or 10 that never made it onto my page. So, um, yeah, it's definitely um, a time commitment. So that being said, you have to really enjoy it, um, which I do. I, I like it a lot. Um, I love hiking. I love like doing, make, do, um, doing this page has really um, like brought on some new hobbies for me. And it's just been really cool. So I really enjoyed it. And um, that's kind of what's helped with the consistency of it. Mm-hmm. Um, so you have to you have to really enjoy it. Yeah. And what about, I mean, I know you said you started with really no formal like social media or marketing experience. What are some of the other skills that you've developed as a content creator and a social media influencer starting from scratch and then being where you are now? Yeah, um, it's definitely evolved. You have to, I guess, stay on top of the trends. But that being said, you still have to make it your own. So (laughs) that's kind of tricky. Um, when I started, I, of course, it was just all photos being posted. Now you have to kind of like stay on top of the reels and more of the short videos. Um, right. Yeah. So, but yeah, honestly, you just have to, like, I just kind of went for it when I started. Like my logo was just one of those like logo maker things off Google. Um, since then I've like evolved into like more of like a brand and like a better like logo and um, better like branding. Um, but you don't need all of that to get started. Um, when I started, it was really just me doing it. Since then I've realized that I really could use some help. So I have like somebody come with me to help me film. Um, so that's been an awesome um, help for me. And um, yeah, so just like little little things like that um, over the years that I've learned. Um, like now I have like a couple like tripods that I'll take with like I'll take like a mini one with me hiking um, to get some of those like hiking shots. But you really don't need all that to get started. Like my advice would be just to go for it, um, which is what I did. And then you can kind of learn along the way and, um, you know, your skills will improve um, over time, I think. Something else that I remember you saying has evolved along with the page is you used to not show yourself as much. And I remember when I followed, I was like, I wonder who this is because they never show themselves. And then eventually you started showing um, yourself, you know, more of that first person Mm -hmm. view and like being on the hike and and showing yourself, you know, walking through the trails. What, uh, how, how did that change as well? And how did you feel making the page, making your self public on the page as an influencer as well. Yeah, you're right. Um, so yeah, when I started the page, I was not um, showing myself. And then um, I guess like a few months in, or maybe like a year in, I did start showing myself more. And that's really like well appreciated, I think, um, you know, thinking about people, other people that other accounts that I follow, um, you know, you do kind of appreciate seeing who's behind the account, and it puts it on a whole new uh, personal level. So I definitely want to do that. Um, and honestly, um, because it is like all online, um, I know like a lot of people are looking at me and, and watching me, but um, it's not like too terribly difficult because I'm still kind of like behind a screen, you know? So I don't think I could ever talk, um, like do like a speech or something in person in front of that many people, but like <laughs> kind of behind a screen, it's, it's not too bad. How has that also helped you evolved in your career and having this as a side hustle? Do you think this will be a side hustle forever? Or is this something that you could potentially like do full time? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of potential, um, I think, for the page. And I don't know. I mean, I think going full time would make it really 
stressful, I guess, um, where it would definitely be like a job, you know, here I still like, I still try to keep it fun. So um, I don't want it to like, really like stress me out too much. And I don't I don't know if it would still like be as fun if it was my full time job. So I don't know, maybe in the future, but for now, I'm okay just keeping on the side, I think. Because my next question was, how do you keep up with this and a full-time job? Because you are creating a lot of content. As you said, taking these photos and making these reels does take time. And it seems like you're going somewhere every day. Because when I look at your page, I'm like, wow, she has a lot of time to go and do these things. But how do you balance that? Yeah, it's it's tough, um, for sure. Um, like I mentioned before, I really do enjoy it. So I don't mind like, you know, always like working at it. Um, but it definitely gets gets hard. Um, a lot of like nights and weekend type type things. Um, sometimes on the weekends, I'll like record like, maybe two or three like different reels. Um, like if I do, like I'll do like a restaurant in the morning and then like a hike in the evening or something. And then I'll just save them and like post them like throughout the week. So um, it's always like, maybe like a couple days behind. Um, but I don't I don't post anything like a few months afterward, but I'll save it for like a couple days or like a week or so. So there is like a content planning and a schedule to a lot of what you do as well. Yeah, I keep it kind of loose. Um, but I do like think about like, on Monday, I'll think like, okay, which things do I want to like post this week? Like what kind of makes sense? Um, and sometimes you have to think ahead too. Um, like I did a uh, fall foliage one where I did like the, um, what's that square called in downtown century century plaza, I think. So I did like the trees like before they um, the foliage. And yeah. so you have to like kind of think ahead because I actually went there uh, when they were like all green. And then I went there again in like um, a week or two and did like a before and after of like the, the trees. Nice. So you have to like kind of think ahead like that too sometimes, um, which I I don't know, like sometimes content ideas come to me and I like write them down and then it might be a few months before I can actually go and and film it. Like this summer I want to do like a lot of like swimming holes. So like now I'm like kind of like researching and thinking like, okay, what can I show off? Like even like for the summer. So yeah, a lot does like go into it. And we were just talking too about the camping trips that you guys have got planned already. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I love camping and every year I like, I think, okay, I want to camp more this year, but then um, it's always so last minute and either all the campgrounds will be booked up or I already have something else like planned for the weekends. So, um, and camping season's like, you know, kind of short. It's pretty much the summer. Um, mm-hmm. so yeah, this year I went ahead and booked a couple of things actually back in January, uh, for like May and June. So I'm looking, I'm looking forward. I'm going to, um, to Lake Moomaw and oh, okay. which it looks like a really beautiful lake. I've never been. And then, um, Grayson Highlands State Park. So, um, yeah, I do. Um, I'll probably blog about this too. I don't just do Roanoke. I like doing things that people that live in Roanoke can go experience. So, you know, if that means a weekend trip, then I can do that. Um, has having the account also encouraged you and your family and friends to get out and explore more because you have a motor a motivator behind it to create content, but just kind of getting you out of the house? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and even following all these other like content creators on Instagram, like they'll be posting, oh, like peak, um, peak cherry blossom bloom or, or whatever. Um, and, you know, I kind of like feel like, okay, well, this is cool. This is a cool thing. Maybe I should go like do this myself. Um, so yeah, I think it definitely has inspired me to get out and, and try new things. Um, just like following other people and seeing what they're doing. Um, and it does, yeah like not only am I going on a hike but I am going also to create content so (laughs) sometimes I'll like go by myself just because I don't want to like annoy people (laughs) you know (laughs) so I don't know it's it's fine I enjoy it yeah what have been some of your best recommendations that we can shout out here whether it's a local lunch spot that you love to go to or best cocktail bar around the area can we shout out some of uh, coming from the best of roanoke (laughs) creator what what are some of the best places to go in roanoke right now yeah um well i have to give a shout out to um texture and stock um i did a big um giveaway with them just a few weeks ago 
And that um, was really well received, I think. Um, like, and, and who are they? What is Texture? Yeah, so that's like a local furniture company. Um, all the furniture is made right here in Roanoke, which I think is really cool. It's super, super local. Um, and they have a showroom that they opened at the uh, fire, the old fire station downtown. Right. So that's really cool um, because they, um, the fire station was closed for like I think ten years or something, and now they've just turned in, into the furniture showroom. There's um, a hotel, like a boutique hotel upstairs. There's a really nice um, Norwegian restaurant. So it's just the whole space is is really cool, um, and I got to stay there and show that off to my followers and um that was like really well received it's it feels really nice to you know like get pictures of like oh we just went to dinner at stock and it was like our anniversary dinner and it was it's like so nice to like feel like I had a part of that um that they got the recommendation off my page so that that's really cool um have you been there yet I have not. I do need to go and check it out um and explore. I will say that um Oh, gosh. One of the places I went to recently was the Liberty Trust. Mm -hmm. And I think you did something with them, right? Like a reel or a post about their new restaurant downstairs in the hotel. Yeah, that's another really, really cool one I did. Um, And that used to be a bank. So... Yeah, yeah, I love I love like, you know, showing off like the cool, like new new things that we have going on. Um, another um, another really cool place that I got to try recently um, was Hustle Haven, which is like the cycle bar and yoga studio downtown. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually did a giveaway um, with them where they um, the winners got to come to a private class, uh, like a private cycle class with me. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. And I. Um, I got like some great feedback where, you know, oh, I've wanted to try this for so long. And now like I finally had a good reason to try it. So um, that that feels like really nice, you know, kind of like encouraging people to like get active and and try something different and try something new. Um, And then they've like since signed up like to be members at the cycle studio. So that's been really cool. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. One of my last questions for you was what has it been like to see this community formed from your followers and and get that interaction from them or get to meet them um, and see that they went and did something that you featured on your page? What has that been like for you? I mean, it feels really nice. Um, And I like like kind of inspiring people to to try something new. That's why I started a hiking um, group. So I'll do like hiking meetups every um, couple months. And That's awesome. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, like, it feels really nice. Like, it does make me feel like I'm more, like, part of the community. Um, we also, like, started a little bowling group. So, I don't know. It's, it's been really cool. Um, I told people, like, even if you're not even that good at bowling, just come out and we can hang out. So, yeah, we do that now um, on Thursdays if you're interested. <laughs> nice. Yeah, so if you're listening and you're a bowler. Yeah. Hit up Best of Roanoke's page and talk to Jenya. Um, Yeah, that's so cool. And I've also seen so many comments on the different posts that you do saying, oh, I've lived in Roanoke my whole life and I've never been here. Or I've thought about this place or I've driven by here, but I've never tried it. And then you feature it and people, you know, are excited to go. Yeah, that that feels really nice. Um, Like it makes me feel like I'm like really making a difference, um, like for the businesses and for the community. So it's been really cool. And Roanoke has built itself up so much just in the time that I've been here. There's been more restaurants popping up or boutique hotels. So it's so cool that you're in town to spotlight all of this. My last question for you, since this is the Access Success Podcast, is could you share a recent success story uh, personally or professionally? Um, yeah, I guess I'll have to go back to the... Um the texture uh, partnership that I had um, recently, yeah, that just did um, like I think that post and that reel did really well. Um, it got I think like eighty thousand views, which is like so so cool, you know. Like oh, I created that, you know, and um, that many people saw it, and so many people like booked the the um, hotel, the boutique hotel, and um, tons of like dinner reservations came through. So. I thought, um, you know, that was, like, really successful. Um, And even after that post, I had, like, quite a few businesses reaching out to me, asking me, how can we get on your page? So, you know, that that to me is, like, really cool. So, um, yeah, I have 
April is going to be busy with a lot of different like cool <laughs> cool content. Um, you know, not just hotels, all all sorts of different things. So stay tuned. Yes, I can't wait to see everything you create. Thanks so much for coming in today, Jenya. Yeah, thank you for having me. Absolutely. (laughs) And thank you for watching and listening to this episode. If you liked it, give us a shout out. Let us know. Follow us on Spotify and YouTube for all of the latest content from the Access Success Podcast and the Access You team. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Access Success Podcast produced by Access U, a division of Access Advertising and Public Relations. Find us on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram to keep up with what the world of education needs to hear at Access U Agency and connect with us at accessu.com. Let's do something big.